heart rate variability really will give you the information to be able to establish yourself in a more coherence through the short term, the days and the weeks, and it will also give you a marker for how well you're doing in the long term. Hey, how you doing? I'm Wilson. As you know, everything in this channel is dedicating to getting you into this guy here, the flow state. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss how to use heart rate variability to get you back into this guy here. Okay, so to understand heart rate variability, we need to basically touch on your autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system has two branches, sympathetic and parasympathetic, sympathetic fight or flight, parasympathetic rest and digest. When you're in flow, there's a constant dance between sympathetic and parasympathetic according to the situation and environment you're in. There's that definite push and pull that's going on. Fight or flight, rest and digest. A dance between these two aspects. When you take your heart rate variability, you want to be taking it in the morning. Why? It's because you should be in a more parasympathetic state meaning it will give you a clearer snapshot of what's actually happening to your nervous system. It should be in a more rested state in the morning. Now, heart rate variability is not your heartbeat that it's measuring, it's the gaps between those beats. There's a dis different sort of distance between each of these, okay? This variety between these gives us an indication of how well your body is in a parasympathetic state in a more rested state, in a more coherent state, okay? A more healthy, vibrant state. Now, there's a couple of devices out there to use, but I use heart rate variability or HRV4 simply because it's easy and consistent. What I mean by that is it's easy for you to take the data, it takes one minute, first thing in the morning. Therefore, if it's easy, you'll be more consistent at doing it. Consistency is key. The more information you get, the clearer the baseline score you're going to be able to get. And then you're going to be able to look to gradually improve that baseline score. So how I look at it, the information I get off heart rate variability, I look to use something in a short term way, which the information from the baseline will be able to help me adapt my days and week. And also the longevity, long term goal. I'm looking to gradually improve my baseline score over months, years, and so on. That great baseline score is a nice indication on how well, how healthy your system is. So if you look to have a, a gradual increase over the long term with your baseline score, it will be a good marker that whatever you're doing to improve your health and well-being is working out. Now for a performance basis in the short term goal, if you look to work with your heart rate variability, you're more likely to be able to tune yourself into the flow of the day. So let me explain that. You have something called your ultradian rhythm, which is like your nervous system's natural ebb and flow. It's constantly, you know, dancing between being fully engaged and active focus levels are sky high, and then there's points where it needs to be recharged and replenished. So a high, and then down here is where they need to be recharged and replenished. Now let's imagine that that's happening all the time and you wake up in the morning and you know that you need to tune in to this ultradian rhythm. So what you do with the information with heart rate variability, you decide whether you need to switch yourself on or calm yourself down. Another way I like to think of it is you think of this as like uh, your instrument in tune, okay? You need to tune yourself into that for the day. So sometimes what you need to do is tighten the the strings on your guitar or your strings on your instrument or you've got to loosen them. Heart rate variability, the information that you'll get in the morning, will be able to tell you if you need to be more tight in the strings or loosen the strings, more sympathetic or parasympathetic. So you adapt your morning routine to tune yourself into your instrument of the day, to tune yourself into flow of the day according to the information you get. So it might mean that you need to be more you need to do things more physical in the morning, or you might need to do things more meditation-based, breathing-based in the morning, 
or you might need to do a bit of both. It all really depends on what your heart rate variability is, what your heart rate variability is of that day, okay? So this is why you need to be adaptable, just like what it is for flow. It's not like I get up in the morning, I do this, 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 and I'm good to go. No, you can't do that because your system has so many different components to adapt, which affects, sorry, your heart rate variability, therefore will affect your tuning for the day, therefore will affect your performance for the day. So you need to work with this. Okay, so on that waffling on that I was doing, I want to explain this. There's really four pillars that will affect your heart rate variability. You can go into a lot of detail of these, right? But I just wanted to sort of summarize it with the four pillars. Physical, so you know that if you're training a lot, exercising a lot will have an effect on your system, right? It will have an effect on your nervous system. But if you're eating the wrong foods, it will also have an effect on your nervous system. Some foods have a more sympathetic response and other foods have a more parasympathetic response. So if you're trying to tune yourself in for the day and you're already in a sympathetic state, but you're taking more coffee and you're eating more pancakes and stuff like this, then you're putting your body in a further, further uh, distant from from your baseline score from your tuning of the day mental same thing applies if you're mentally tired or run down you've done a lot of work you get that sort of fog going over because you've really been pushing yourself that affects your nervous system emotions emotions have a huge effect on your nervous system as well your limbic system right underneath your limbic system that part of your brain they call it the emotional house the emotional center Underneath there, tickling on the bottom of that, is your autonomic nervous system. If your autonomic nervous system is agitated, more sympathetic, it's what it's doing is it's locking you into that lower mind, locking you into that uh, emotional house. Therefore, you're more likely to respond aggressively, defensively. Um, habits you've done for years and years and years will just respond to that. But if you manage to find a coherence, you're more likely to calm that limbic system down. Therefore, you have the ability to establish new habits and behaviors. Therefore, you have the ability to, to reframe certain situations in real time, not later on. And then the material. The material, if you can't pay your bills, if you're stressed about financial flow, then it's gonna have an effect on here, here, and here, right? You're not gonna be able to eat those good foods, you're not gonna be able to educate yourself the same way, and you're gonna be emotionally and mentally stressed because of that. So this has an effect on your heart rate variability. So the bottom line is, is that heart rate variability really will give you the information to be able to establish yourself in a more coherence through the short term, the days and the weeks, and it will also give you a marker for how well you're doing in the long term. It will tune you into your natural ebb and flow of the day, okay? Meaning that you'll know whether you have to tighten your strings or loosen your strings to get yourself into more coherence for the day. This also changes as well as the way you get into it, okay? So keep that in mind. This here we should really give you a nice understanding of how to utilize heart rate variability to be able to get the best out of yourself. Now the other thing that I want to touch on is if you've got a partner and you're doing it together, don't try and compete against who's got the best baseline score. That will be counterproductive for you. What you really want to be doing is just making it more personal. This is why heart rate variability is such a personal growth and evolution towards it. Take the information, find your baseline score and use it to get the best out of yourself. Keep in mind the four things that can really affect that heart rate variability. Find a coherence here, which will help you find a coherence here, which will help you find a coherence here, and will help you kick ass. Okay, thanks very much for listening. I'm sure you found this video useful. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, why are you still here? And if you really thought it was awesome, please subscribe and ring that bell so that uh, you can get more notifications of when I'm going to be putting more videos. Thanks for listening. Ciao.